Good evening and welcome to tonight's program. And thank you very much for joining us. I'm Trudy Lorandos, Adult Services Coordinator. And tonight our guest presenters are Rick and Carla, and they are from AECOM, and they will introduce themselves. Great. So let me get this back to your presentation. There you go. Awesome. Thanks, Trudy. Yes. Thanks so much for having us. Um, and Trudy's got uh, was able to, was gracious enough to have a bunch of uh, book options um, that you can look at either during the presentation or afterwards. Um, kind of talk about uh, lawn care, um, stormwater, you know, stormwater improvements, and especially rain gardens and things like that. Um, so my name is Rick Eilertson. I've been I've served on the Madison Area Municipal Stormwater Partnership Information Education Committee, MAMSWAP I and E for for short, um, for the last twenty years. Um, in a number of different, uh, um, through a, a number of different uh, 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 areas, but uh, um, I've been back with AECOM now for five years. AECOM serves as the the city engineer for for the city of Verona, and Carla actually serves as 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 our as our primary contact for the city of Verona as as Verona city engineer. So Carla and I are, are tag teaming the presentation. I'll be primarily talking about rain barrels, and then Carla will talk about yard care and then I'll do a little bit of wrap up about some of the different other things that we're we're hoping to to talk uh, in future sessions um, so maybe before I get started I'm curious how many people are city of Verona residents just by a show of hands any town of Verona residents any other any other municipalities or, or townships Madison. okay awesome yeah yeah awesome awesome great Great. So again, you know, we'll be talking about about you know pretty much all things rain barrels, and then Carla will talk about yard care. Are there any specific items that people want to get out of either this session or possibly a future session that we might do? And if you don't, you, know, you just think about that. Well, we can have a discussion at the end, and feel free to ask questions as I'm presenting. We do have a bunch of slides. Some of the slides will will run through relatively quickly. Um, they will be there, as Trudy said, they are being recorded. Um, we'll also make a PDF available to Trudy um, if anybody wants to to get a copy of the PDF. We can make that available. Um, but again, the the video will, will also be on the library website, um, and then we're also hoping to incorporate it on the City of Verona web website. With permission, obviously. Um, so, kind of getting started. Uh, this is the rain barrel that I just set up uh, this this spring, and actually, I, because I'm in the process of winterizing right now, I actually just dismantled it today so I could have it as a display. Um, right now, I've got the top in a in a convex fashion, so water would shed from it. Um, I actually installed it with inverted, so you just turn the, that cover upside down. And then you can put soil in it, and then plant, uh, you know, flowers or or plants in it, um, which I kind of liked. It was it, was, it just it just you know helped with the aesthetics. Um, I, you know, I, these are just obviously just flowers, but you know, we, you know, we've got a lot of other flowers that we like for for the looks and the aesthetics of it. Um, then uh, during the yard care, Carla will talk a little about aerating. So this is uh, me aerating our our yard. Um, and uh, this is my youngest son, Evan, actually helping to doing a soil tester. So we've got a soil probe that uh, Carla will talk about right here. You can check these out at uh, Dane County, um, at the Dane County Fen Oak building um, for free. You can either buy these for like about $450 a piece, or you can check it out for free at, uh, at Dane County um, there. So um, you can make the decision on what works best for you. Uh, and then I also have some soil bags you can grab if you want to. So um, uh, Carla will talk about the soil bags that you can you can basically extract that soil with the soil probe, put that in a bag, and then and then take it into um, to the UW system for testing to see what type of what what type what information what you what you have for soil, um, you know the clay content, organic content, and and uh, um, nitrate level and so forth. So. There we go. Um, so rain barrel basics. And uh, the first slide that I've got is uh, just kind of a typical residential scenario without a rain barrel, obviously, or, and without a, without a rain garden. You have generally, you know, you've got a roof and if, as long as your roof doesn't leak, 
you know, all of your water goes down to the downspout and then out, you know, either onto your, hopefully onto your lawn. Um, some people still have their, their downspouts directed onto impervious surfaces like their driveway and it goes right out to the, to the, the street. Um, generally, you know, we try to try to intercept that water and get it to soak in the ground as close, you know, either to use it in, in like a rain barrel where we're actually harvesting that rainwater. Um, or and, and then be able to utilize it, um, or to get it to soak into the ground either in a downspout garden. We'll talk. We'll talk about in a future presentation or a rain garden. Um, we also have some different resources that we can um, direct people to. But uh, generally, and then and then people are generally using you know spigot on their on their home to water water um, plants and and uh, whether they're flowers or vegetables and and uh, with a rain barrel. You can actually harvest that water and then use that to 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 water any vegetation that you've got, whether it's a, a vegetable garden, flower garden. Um, you know, you can use it for grass, obviously during during drought periods. Um, so that's the basic presentation pre um, premise. Um, but uh, you know, these are some of the different reasons that I um, thought of off the top of my head that people might install a rain barrel. One is to reduce the amount of stormwater running off of their property. Another one is to reduce the pumping of groundwater um, because any water that you use that's connected to your to your water service um, is, is water that's in this area is all coming from groundwater. So city of Verona has has number of different wells that are that are pulling water from the groundwater table. Um, and that's and that's basically what would what is what you would be utilizing if you're if you're using your spigot for watering things. Um, the second or the third is uh, just saving money by reducing the pot potable water. And one of the things that a lot of people don't think about, any water that that does, is going through the meter is you're getting charged both a water fee for and a sanitary sewer fee. Usually the sanitary sewer fee, it costs about four times more per per cubic foot of water used than the water fee, but you're, you're paying on both of those. And obviously if you're watering your, your lawn, your early or, or, or garden, you're only using that water. Um, I mean, you're not going, it's not nothing going in the sanitary sewer. So unless you have a water only meter, which most people don't have, um, then you're, you're basically getting charged for both, you know, effectively five times the amount of, of, uh, of water that you're using. Um, so that's something to, to think about. Um, and then there's several people that actually feel that the, the, the water that they're using from a rain barrel, because it doesn't have the additives like, like um, chlorine and, and uh, fluoride, um, and sometimes potassium permanganate is another, is another chemical that gets added. Um, to to water um, at, at you know in municipal water systems. So generally, the the water that's that's um, harvested in a rain barrel is you know some people feel and I and I am one of those people feel that that water is actually more healthy to put on to to plants. Um, and then you know I guess another one that I didn't list, but uh, a lot of people some people use them as art. Um, really like the aesthetics of the rain barrel, so it's kind of fun. Um, like places like Mass, uh, Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewers District actually incorporates art into the rain barrels that they make available for, for residents in the Milwaukee area. So one of the other things that, that uh, you know, normally this is about $150 value if you buy these direct from the manufacturer. Dane County and Madison Area Municipal Stormwater Partnership are actually making these available during the spring through through early fall for about seventy four dollars per per rain barrel. It's a fifty gallon rain barrel, um, and then if you once you install it, um, then and you, don't, you don't need to worry about getting one right now because they're not they're actually run out. But next spring they should be able to make them available. Both uh, at City of Middleton and Village of DeForest were two of the different spots that you could you could you you buy them online and then you can pick up at, at either Middleton or DeForest. We may have additional um, places that that will have them available as well. But one of the really nice things that MAMSWAP um, allows or or encourages people they got a thirty dollar rebate that. Uh, that once you install it, you send a picture and, and fill out a send an email to Crystal at uh, at Dane County. Then you'll get a, a thirty dollar rebate, um, a check back 
Um, and then City of Verona actually, actually just uh, raised their uh, rebate from $10 per 50 gallon rain barrel up to $30. So that'll take effect next year in 2023. Um, so if you if you buy a rain barrel next year, you can have you know basically up to $60. So you know effectively, if you do it right, you know it's only a $14 rain barrel all, with all the all the parts. So I'm going to talk both about uh, this style of the rain barrel which actually uses a downspout diverter. You know, this, this is a downspout right here. And then I had basically um, drilled into the downspout to steal the water from the downspout, send it into, into the rain barrel here. There's a little, um, you can see it on the opposite side of the rain barrel over there, but there's a little uh, pipe that basically um, goes from the diverter into the, and fills the rain barrel. Uh, and then when, once the water gets up to, the, to a certain elevation in the rain barrel, then water actually goes within that that diverter down the norm the same the normal way that that water goes other, otherwise. I'll also contrast that with a different style of, of rain barrel that you actually redirect the downspout to the top of the rain barrel, and then there's a screen. So that's that's I've got a, a an example of what's called the cistern rain barrel S Y S T E R N. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that um, as, as well as the, this style and some of the different the the different ins and outs of each of those options. So start with the cistern rain barrel. Um, that's I believe it's an 80 gallon rain barrel. Um, it might say in the in the fine print here, but uh, again, that's got a, a it's a little bit larger diameter. Um, it's a it's a slightly different type of plastic. They're both high density polyethylene. This one is a little bit more rigid. Um, they've been around for a little bit longer than at least than I've been aware of these. Um, and, uh, um, you know, again, you know, the premise is you basically direct water to the top of it. And then you, you've got a couple of different spots for, for water that, that leaves it. Um, one of the key things for both of these options, you have really, it's really important to make a stable base. Um, Trudy was able to let me borrow one of the red plastic uh, library things. So you obviously want to have a lot, something a lot more sturdy than that when you fill it, when you allow it to be filled with water. Um, usually like a con concrete blocks work really well, um, but you could also make a, a wooden um, stand too, but uh, you want to make sure that that's, that that can handle the full amount of weight because um, it's like several hundred pounds once once the water is is filled in that in that rain barrel. A um, couple other keys you want and you you look at the at where the spout is. So this one actually the spout's about you know maybe a foot a little over a foot above the bottom. The cistern the, the spout's probably only about three inches off of the bottom. So that that you want to make sure that you set it high enough. That whatever you want to fill, whether it's a five-gallon pail or a watering a watering can, you want to make sure you can actually fill that right without lifting the the rain barrel up because you're not going to do that once it's full of water. A um, couple of other um, things to note. So again, this screen, you know, will will get uh, debris on whatever's on your roof is going to go to to here. So I've got asphalt shingles on the roof, and you can actually see. Um, when you look closely there, there's little the little chunks of asphalt. Those obviously you know wash off of the roof over time, and you'll get that in your rain barrel. Some people are concerned about that. I I, I haven't heard that it's an issue with that amount of asphalt, um, but it is it is something that you, I mean generally is not it's not helping the plants survive, right? Again, here's me sh um, just showing that you know I've got a really my tallest pail, so I want to make sure that that. Uh, I get that up high enough so that the tallest item that you have to fill is is, is you're able to fill without without uh, lifting it up, of course. Um, and then this is another example. You can like this. I actually have a sprinkler hose. Um, a soaker hose work, works much better if you want to basically keep the valve open. And then you know, at, so water will have, you know it, it just allows water to slowly go out through a soaker hose. It really didn't work very well in the sprinkler hose, so I wouldn't recommend that. It's the sprinkler hoses are really meant for high pressure water. You know, like basically connecting to a water spigot um, from the house. And you know, here you only have a few pounds of pressure. Um, or a couple pounds of pressure, whereas you probably have 60 to 80 pounds of, of pressure um, connected to a spigot. So um, anyway, it, it really didn't drain out very quickly for the for the sprinkler hose. Um, and I even I drilled drilled holes like every four inches, and 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 it worked really well for about a month. But then those holes clogged up, and and but it, but I've had really good luck with the the soaker hose. So um, and again, you know, like I've got peas. 
underneath the awning or the overhang so they don't get water otherwise but because they're connected to the rain barrel then then i then i have basically water it'll 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 soak out you know and and then water my peas over a period of maybe three four days um depending on how how quickly it's it's draining out um so it, I, I find that really beneficial i don't have to you know it's basically don't have to you know maintain empty the water the rain barrel in between different storm events and here's something else to think about is you know how much water you get from that one downspout you can run uh, rain barrels in series whether it's this style or or you know a make your own and again you can have them at different elevations if you want um, this one, you know, they basically have the overflow, um, so that would basically fill the next rain barrel down in series. Um, you, you know, it kind of depends on what you're watering and how much water you, you need um, in between rain events. Obviously, one, that's one of the big um, wild cards. We don't know how when the next rainfall is, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to 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 meter the water out, you know, for as long as you might need it. So there's some tools that you'd need. Um, so I've got a, just a battery operated drill. There's um, one of the nice things about this kit um, that comes with, with the, the, the rain barrel is you actually get these hole saws that come with it. One, one for the bigger, the bigger pipe connection and then the other one for the, the spigot. So you'd actually, you actually drill the spigot. You can put the spigot either at the, where I've got it, um, which is also, I guess I'll, I'll show another uh, this next one. So I've got the second um, hole so spot up um, for the, the spigot. You can put it down at the bottom, but one of the things to think about um, if you're doing that, I guess I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but you want to have a level um, and, and a screwdriver. Um, and again, these are the hole saws that come with it. There's some other parts that, that come with it. Um, another key thing and this is even this is hard, especially for guys like me, is to actually read the directions. But it's important to read the directions um, for this. Otherwise, if you don't if you don't install the the pipe at the right elevation into the downspout, it's not going to work for you. And then you're then you're you you've wasted the you have to get a new downspout if you need to read read rail your downspout. But it, um, it's pretty pretty easy process. Um, uh, one, and again, you know, seeing a, a you can search YouTube for videos of of how to do it as well. But uh, um, keeping this, this once you have your rain barrel set where you want it, the right elevation, then you need to make sure that you're, you've got this spot, the same elevation as where you want to drill the, your hole, okay? So if you have that, that hole too high, it's going to fill the rain barrel um, and basically overtop it. Um, it, won't, it won't operate as it's designed. If you, don't fill it, if you have it down too low, it, it'll only fill up to the elevation that, uh, that, that that hole is. So it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of important to read the direction sometimes. And this is definitely one of those cases. So a couple of things on um, this, this earth mind, it's um, option. This is basically your, if, you, if this is where you put your, your um, spigot, you only have this amount of water that's actually, that you're usable, right? So unless you actually pump it or suck that water out, you're not, you're not using the, the water in this bottom. Now the benefit of the water in the bottom is it actually serves as ballast, so it helps you know keep it keeps the rain barrel from from blowing around. I didn't have to strap the rain barrel to to the side of the house um, or the garage is where I've got it installed um, because you've got because there's this is all full of water. Now you can put um, like cement blocks um, or something like that in in here too, and that and that does a nice job of just keeping it stable and and not not moving. And again, if you do that, then you, if you could potentially, you might want to, you'd want to raise your rain barrel up. But if you put blocks in it, um, that probably keeps enough uh, ballast, basically weight on, you know, to keep it from tipping over um, without, so without to being too much of a problem. Um, and again, this is the smaller holes because you actually need to drill that hole. That that's that's uh, it's not, I mean, it's it's not a a hole um, until after you drill it, obviously. Again, this is the downspout diverter, and you can, if you want, interested in taking a look at it, um, the example is is just on the other side of the rain barrel. Um, but it's got a hole in the middle. Um, it actually is sized to fit a two inch by three inch um, rectangular downspout, which is one of the more common sizes. But it also works for a three inch by four inch. But you put it in the three inch side, which, whichever whichever um, you know, you put it in the three inch, whether it's a three by four or the two by two by three. Um, so. 
if you put it in a three by four, obviously it's not getting all the water, um, but uh, you're getting probably about 75% of it. If you put it in the two by three, you're probably getting over 90% of that water. Again, this is an example of um, the having the, the lid inverted and then being able to put soil in it um, for, uh, for plants. One of the key things for this diverter and really any rain, um, uh, rain barrel diverter, you wanna make sure that you don't have any leaves going down here. So it's really important with this style, especially to have you know, some sort of a gutter guard, um, whether it's this style or another style, you wanna try to make sure that you're not having leaves that go down that downspout because those will clog this, this up. Because I just put in um, gutter guards on my, on, my, on my gutters this last year, um, I didn't have any debris when I just cleaned this out, when I just took it out um, earlier today. So it's nice to see that nice and clean. Again, there's a couple more pictures of what that looks like um, in the winter. So winterizing that one, then you want to pull that out, obviously, before it freezes. You don't want to have the water in here that freezes because it'll freeze and expand either this one or the cistern also. Um, and then once it expands, it can crack that that rain barrel, and then you you know you you you're out you're, you're out your money and your time for installing it. Um, so there is a special, just a little, um, basically a plug that you can put in um, it, it, when you know for when you winterize it, so that you know you, you can just leave that hole there. You know, there's not going to be much water that comes out of it, but but uh, you know you also have this this plug that you can basically put in. It'll still let all the water go down the downspout otherwise. And I think with that, um, I'll turn it over to Carla to talk more about yard care. Sounds good. And I think we'll just do questions at the end. Um, yeah, so I'm Carla. I'm the city engineer here in Verona. I work with Rick at AECOM. And I'm going to focus on yard care today. So first, we're going to talk mostly about turf grass, um, you know, the monoculture kind of turf grass that we're we've been conditioned to, to wanna see. And then also just talk about general green ground cover, greener maintenance practices. So we'll talk about that too. And then also alternatives, um, native plants, rain gardens and vegetable gardens. And we are um, in the future uh, considering doing a, an event or, or a presentation, I should say, that focuses more on rain gardens and native plantings and downspout gardens, just to get into some more detail um, at that time. So typical turf graph inputs, um, you've got fertilizer, uh, pesticides, we'll talk a little bit more about pesticides. Um, you can modify the pH of your soil if needed, and then of course, water as needed. So for fertilizer, the important part is to read the label. It shows the breakdown between the different uh, nutrients. So uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, um, so in each do something different. Uh, you can actually, what Rick noted before, get a soil sample of your yard and send that over to UW Extension through the process that Rick talked about and get a better idea of where your soil may be deficient in certain nutrients and get recommendations for fertilizers um, and uh, whether you need to adjust your soil pH with some of those additives that we noted. So that's kind of an interesting thing to do. I think the cost was like $15 when I looked. So pesticides, just realizing that the aside suffix means to kill. So, you know, whether that's an herbicide, fungicide, insecticide. So whatever you're putting on your grass is getting into your soil. Um, it's getting into that food chain affecting, you know, getting into worms, which the birds are eating, you know, can affect pets and kids. And um, it really does change, you know, the look of the grass. And, and I think, again, we've been conditioned to, to, want to see those pristine monoculture type grass and no, not one weed. Um, but I think considering, you know, you can see these before and after photos, you know, in some cases, they're much more lush to have some of the clover and some of those um, plants can really like fix some of the nutrients into the soil too. So some of those can also really benefit the bees um, and different insects. So just something, you know, another thing to consider. Um, so again, do we really need pesticides? Just noting that children, you know, within that age group, six to 11, are really out on the yards playing soccer, you know, just in their own yards, um, really highly exposed and have that 
highest level of lawn chemicals in their bodies, as well as, as pets too are affected, of course. And so just trying to use pesticides if needed sparingly, and maybe change our view a little bit about how lawns should truly look. So in terms of turf maintenance, focusing on those Memorial Day and Labor Day timeframes, if you are gonna be doing the aeration, maybe some overseeding, fertilizing, um, and then in between uh, mowing at some of the higher, um, I guess leaving some depth to your, uh, to your grass um, is a good practice. So lawn aeration, uh, talking a little bit more in detail of, uh, about this, but focusing on getting, you can rent an aerator and Rick had that on the first slide actually, and trying to get a, a deeper aeration, like six inches deep. Some of the aerators only go four inches deep, so that's not as helpful. And um, you don't have to do this every year, maybe once every five years or so, you have to, you'll have to monitor your own um, lawn, but it's best right after a rainfall to do this. And then on top of that, you can add compost and that adds nutrients to your soil. You can use home compost and then you can also get bagged compost at the store. And then talking about overseeding bare patches in your yard. I actually talked to someone that we work with up in the Stevens Point area today and they have very sandy soil and he ended up overseeding with clover up there um, just because to lock in some of those nutrients, clover actually locks in nitrates, similar to how farmers shift from corn to soybeans from year to year. And so instead of just having the pure grass, he's mixed the clover in and he said, it might not be pure grass, like some people want to see, but it's much more lush and green. So I thought that was interesting. So again, I mentioned mowing. So doing the higher mowing height, um, making sure that you've got sharp blades so that you're not allowing pathogen entry. And then I think most people have heard this, but keeping grass clippings on the yard if possible. So trying to um, mulch your grass, you know, as part of mowing, because that'll return some of the nutrients to the yard. And right now it's really important with leaves, you can actually mulch your leaves in place. Um, so, you know, something that we do in our yard is just try and regularly get out with the mower, even though the, the grass isn't growing that frequently and just go through and, and mow and get those leaves mulched down. You wanna get them down to about like a dime size, about this big. Um, it, but if you do it regularly enough, you can take care of quite a few leaves. And I, I live in an area with very mature trees. So at some point, if they all drop at once, you usually have to, do something different, but it, it works though for the most part and it saves us having to rake them. So keeping good records, um, definitely, you know, like if you fertilize at a certain time of year and, and are able to take photos and see what's working, I think that's an important piece of this. Um, and then talking about some alternatives, um, you know, the big kind of again, monoculture, grass, sort of typical suburban lawns, you're seeing more and more native plants getting incorporated into that with guard, um, just uh, flower gardens, but then also rain gardens and things like that. And the important part about these plants is that, um, use my pointer. So you can see the typical turf grass really has shallow roots, but these native plants um, have these really deep root systems and they increase the you know, both the uptake of, of stormwater, but also um, encourage infiltration of stormwater because it's it's adding porosity to that soil to get the water in, into the ground. So again, we'll, we're, we're planning to do a more detailed discussion about rain gardens and downspout gardens, but there's a couple up here. So these are at the ends of these downspouts. Obviously nothing is established here. Um, and then also just, uh, you know, this area looks like it might be slightly depressed in a, in a rain garden. This would be actually in the city right away. So of course that would be something that you'd, if you were gonna change any grade in this area, you'd have to talk to the city about before you just do it. Um, but like I said, a lot of, um, you're gonna see, you're seeing more and more of these native gardens as people really start to um, understand, you know, more about the native plants that we have in Southern Wisconsin. So flower gardens, we talked about that. And then even fruits and fruit and vegetable gardens. So converting, you know, extra space that would have been turf grass to something like this is potentially a better use and maybe connect that soaker hose from the, the rain barrel to this. Um, and, and then you start to get a really nice kind of green approach to your yard. So Rick, you wanna just briefly cover this? Yeah. And 
Okay. So some of the other things that we're, we'd be interested in talking with you about is, is other work that the Madison Area Municipal Stormwater Partnership is, is working on, and I'll highlight a couple of those. Um, right now, we're just getting into the Leaf Free Streets um, uh, uh, program. We're encouraging people to, to actually rake leaves out of the street whenever possible and mulch it on their, on their yards if possible. Um, you know, obviously, different, different municipalities have different programs for leaf collection if the municipality does collect leaves. Um, so you want to look at 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 the at the web page or or if you can't find it on the web page for that your, your municipality, um, give give the municipality a call and learn more about it. But generally, nobody's going to complain too much if you if you rake leaves out of the street and and onto your own lawn, and then you can actually um, utilize those those nutrients right on there. It also helps to keep those those nutrients from from uh, going into the the storm sewer system, as Carla mentioned. Um, there's a, and one of the things that I think is kind of fun. Um, there's actually a rain alert, so you can get you can sign up for this this uh, leaf free streets um, rain alert. The, you know the encouraging or the the thing that that the program is encouraging to do is to actually go out you know before the rain because you know that's when the, the when the leaves will be mobilized and go into the storm system. So if you can go out there before the rain, even if it's just immediately before the rain, and then rake those leaves out of the especially just out of the curb line. Um, you can sometimes you can just rake them in you know a little bit farther into the street away from the curb, it'll keep them from being mobilized. Obviously, if you can get them entirely out of the street, that's preferable. Um, but that's one of the programs that we've been um, promoting at, uh, at, at for Ripple Effects. There's actually a website right here, uh, www.ripple-effects.com. Um, there's a whole bunch of different stormwater education information that we've got placed there. Again, Ripple Effects is kind of a program that, that is Dane County wide that we've been promoting positive stormwater uh, efforts. Another thing that we'll be hopefully talking about in, in uh, the next month or two is the salt reduction um, uh, uh, encouragement. Um, so Wisconsin, we, we work quite a bit with Wisconsin SaltWise, so wisaltwise.com. Um, lots of really good information. Um, Allison Madison, um, who uh, um, is the statewide the statewide coordinator for Wisconsin Saltwise, is right here in the in the Middleton Madison area, um, has been doing some really incredible things on just helping you know to encourage cities, villages, parks uh, staff, even private um, private uh, contractors on best practices related to reducing the amount of salt that's that's uh, getting put into the into the environment. Um, both to save money, um, you can see that, that the cost here of salt on a per ton basis has gone from about $30 per ton to over $80 per ton. Um, so it's a pretty significant increase in the cost. And obviously, if we're able to reduce the amount of salt that we're, that we're applying, um, we can actually save money um, depending on how poorly we were doing a job before. And again, we, we you know that we don't want to do this at the expense of of safety, right? So we 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 want to be cognizant of of you know having a safe having safe thoroughfares, whether it's sidewalks or or streets. But we can we found different best practices that we can use a lot less salt and still have it be just as safe, if not safer. Um, so one of the, the th cool things, this is actually right here at the Verona Public Library is a storm drain murals. And so this one we're hoping to maybe freshen up in, in the next uh, year or two, because um, it's starting to get, I think this one's maybe a, um, from like 2018 or, or thereabouts. So it's starting to get fade out a little bit, but uh, we're going around and, and uh, um, you know, encouraging, you know, working with artists on, on painting murals at storm drain and let's still help people get the message that water that goes into there goes into the storm system sometimes without uh, any treatment you know here we actually have any water that goes into this uh, inlet right here actually goes first to the to the the, the bioretention basin right um, just before the street gets treated there and then and then water goes into silent stream pond right across the street so, so we actually have pretty decent treatment on this but we still want to get the message across that anything that goes into those inlets is going into the stormwater system sometimes directly into you know a river or water body without any treatment here we actually do have some pretty good treatment here in Verona but we could always do better right um, and then uh, here also talking about uh, plant Dane. So plant Dane is basically a native plant sale that uh, Dane County and, and MAMSWAP 
offer um, right around. So we want to be thinking about uh, getting your order in by end of February, early March is basically there's the deadline for ordering those plants. You can get plants about half price um, of, of ordering them for a similar quantity at other at other places directly. Um, and then you'd, you'd uh, basically identify what species you want. And then there's a pickup date in, Mar in May, so like two months later, um, that you'd, you'd organize uh, or coordinate uh, picking up uh, the, the, any of the you know, plants that you buy. I think with that, we can have answer any questions that, that people have. Or ideas um, for for future presentations. If there's anything that's that you, that a topic of a burning issue, especially if it's related to stormwater, that's something that's one of the roles that that we play for the city of Verona. Go ahead. So when that rain area was full, and it was still raining, um, what, what happens then? Yeah, yeah. So I'll uh, I'll pull, bring this around. Here. So. Well, the style of bay barrel is obviously it makes, it makes a little bit different. But this one has this converter. So you can see that, that hole in there. Um, so the water you know, really goes, you know, you go up to and then it's got more water, mostly follows the off the, I guess the the along the, the, the wall of pipe, it slides down, and then all that water is you know, the bulk of that water is getting intercepted. And then it actually goes, there's two holes on the sides here that basically fill that pipe. Once that pipe is, you know, once water elevation is up here, then water is forced to basically, you can't go this way anymore, right? You can add pressure in so that if water actually goes down the, the downspout, that could have been normally. So it is a little bit of destruction. So, I mean, depending on how fast that water is coming, you could, you know, temporarily fire. Usually there's so much capacity in the downspout. That uh, you know, usually like the description is right where the gutter connects to the downspout. That's how, how this how this works. Definitely looks like in a horrible So and you can also put in more more um, um, you know other other connections. You, know, you can add more holes anywhere you want. Um, there's special there's special fittings that go in. So basically, put rain in rain barrel in series if you want, or or you can like have other hoses that. Uh, more questions or thoughts are in this. So the other rain barrel system where the water comes into the top end, what happens when that full well, of the water stops going in the rain barrel? Yeah, yeah. So that sister and rain barrel that I have, I think I'll see if I can go um, back to the beginning. So that one, you know, there are, I don't know if I'll be able to see it. Um, I actually cut mine off. Um, although, let's see if I, I might, might have one. This is actually before I cut it off. So there's, there's two different, you can kind of, I don't know if you, can you see that? There's a little knob um, that, uh, it's got a little knockout, um, so you can right right now. I, I left the, that plastic in, so water doesn't come out that that. And I and it, just because I didn't want it um, next to my my house, um, I actually cut that off. But you can you know put the knockout out so the hole drains out, and then connect that pipe either into another another um, rain barrel, or you can just you know let it drain down into the ground so water would overflow. Otherwise, if if like mine, if I've got so much water that, that can't, you know, that get more water than what the soaker hose is letting out, then it'll, it'll just overtop and, and go here. I've got it, it's pretty stable. It just falls on vegetated surface. But obviously if you do that over time, you know, that, you know, you could, you know, have potential for some erosion, but basically the way I've got it, you know, it's basically about a four and a half foot drop um, onto a vegetated surface and, and water, you know, and water basically, you know, I, Everything um, goes into the, I mean, the grass really absorbs most of it. It's about a 30 foot path before it would go out into the alley. And uh, generally for most downspouts, you know, most of that water gets absorbed in that, you know, within a 30 foot um, spot distance from the downspout, depending on your, the slope of the, of the land and what your soil types are.
Well, Great. Is, okay. You can buy some, like you were talking about drilling these, you can buy some of them that are like pre-drilled. Right. Right. So you, yeah. they're just going to be more expensive to, to buy them kind of like put together. You can still get the rebate, right? I mean, Right, yeah, and, if, and again, you just have to have document that you have at least a, a fifty a fifty gallon size to get that rebate. Um, so it can be; it doesn't have to be this this particular rain barrel. Any rain barrel that's that's obviously holding water, right? Um, and again, the, the the intent is that that it's installed properly. So you want to the for both of these rebate options, you'll need to show that just document that it's installed properly with a picture and and uh, and that and basically pledge that 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 you'll use it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So it, it doesn't come together like that. You have to it, it, install it, that. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if I can turn this around, but there's a little dimple right here. It, can, can you see that that dimple right there? So yeah. that makes it really nice, you know. The, there's, there's a um, that hole saw has has a, a bit that goes internally, so you, you know it, it holds it right there. So you you physically have to use that hole saw. Um, I mean, you could use your own, but you know they they actually provide that hole saw with uh, with the kit. So you get all the equipment, and then you have to put it to fill the holes just together. Then. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So there's special fittings that you that you put in there. Um, on both sides, then, and then you can then you can uh, use that that hose that hose connection. And again, different different rain barrel kits you know operate differently. You could also just get a, a fifty gallon um, barrel and then you know go to a to a, to a hardware store and you get the supplies that you need there too. But there, it's it's a uh, it's a little bit you have to really know what you're looking for. Um, whereas you know if you read the directions, you've got all the supplies here um, with the kit. Generally, that at least I, I I like that. So you have to draw drill a hole in your downspout, also. For this one, you do. Yeah, for this one, you have to drill that hole in the downspout. Otherwise, otherwise, you're not going to be able to get that water. And then, how do you drip that hole? Yeah. Like uh, if I, yeah. If I so, put in and move and. So that's one thing that, that, that I don't know if you remember that that, that one. Um, Okay, excuse me. There's the one fitting, this one right here. So this is the fitting, and I just, um, I, I, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, um, the, you basically take one set, took, take this take this out. Um, I think I brought it, I don't know where I put it, but uh, this basically just looks like this. It doesn't have the, the sides in it, but it's basically just a rubber, um, a rubber um, plug that that you know just just uh, you know seals that off so water can't come out of it. We most likely water even if it after it's really raining water, where the water would come out that hole. But um, you know that's that's one of the nice things about this style is that it's just a two inch hole that uh, that is is in the in that. Plug it up with that with that thing. With another yeah with the plug that basically with this then plug. Then it would not even look like a regular handle. It just yeah the water the water would just go straight down the down so normally it, it, it doesn't have this in there to stop the water and you pull it oh, basically yeah. seal the water out of the. So you have to have that for injury or divert the water into the rain barrel. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They don't own the downspout since I live in a condo. Sure. But I know some of my neighbors who live in condos have an exhaust seat. Okay. And one neighbor said, Oh, he helped me, you know, in the spring put one in, but I didn't know much about it. That's sure. Yeah. I want to drill holes in. Gotten the okay to drill holes sure. in the downspout. Right. I mean, that's maybe interesting if you live in a condo to be outdoors as long as you have a pool. Right, <laughs> right, you right. You don't own it. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Great, great, great. I know they've done it because I see them. They've got those there. Oh, okay, how can you do that? Yeah, yeah. So that's a good idea. I mean, even in the condo, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. Well, I mean, I, I think if I mean, unless there's any other questions, we're happy to to stick around. If anybody wants to talk a little bit more, I th I'd encourage you to take a look at the the books that Trudy's got there. Um, any last call for questions? Otherwise, I think we'll we'll wrap it up. Do you have handouts?
So we'll we'll make this available. The, we'll make a PDF available for you. So if, if you want to, uh, yeah. yeah, the best thing would probably be is if you would contact me. I can give you my email address, or you could call me, and I would need your email to forward it to you and a copy of that. Yes. Right. All right. Well, that won't be so great. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I'm not doing it right now. My neighbor, neighbor's willing to help me in the spring. Then I, I would, might need to yeah, get more information. Okay. Very good idea. I think I, yeah. yeah. And there's also um, my mine and Carla's contact information here if you wanted to to email us, you're welcome to. But uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Carla and Rick, for presenting this and sharing this great information with us, your expertise. So we appreciate it. Thank Thanks so much for having us. Thank you, everyone. Can come out tonight too. Are those things that can be checked out? Yes, you can check these out. Yes, take them to the service desk, and they'll check them out. Yes. There's also, if you wanted to, to grab the soil sample page, you're welcome to take um, some lines. I also have a decent and interesting internal place. Not other things about more for kids, um, but uh, it's also now for the too. So it talks about. Uh, um, just different stormwater um, items and uh,